Hi, and welcome to Answers News for July 26, 2018. Wow, you said that with feeling. Yeah. For a change. <laughs> I've gotten riled up a little bit today. Oh, yeah. Okay, I want you to yeah. notice something. You haven't said one word. What? About something. About have, something. Have a look at how professional we are. Coats. See that? Good. It's not necessarily we, considered professional. Well, oh, it is we're, today. We're, we're, we're trying to, yeah, we're trying to, we're trying to raise, the level. yeah, raise uh, professional raise level. Nice. Yeah, professional. Okay. And we want to, that. we want to show you the two professionals with you. That's fine. All right. Well, we have a wonderful <laughs> studio audience with us today. So make yourselves known. There we go. Come on. Okay, and. You know, normally, uh, normally we like to talk about just a few things as notifications go out, as people get yeah. online, and then we'll get online here ourselves. And I was talking about what are we going to talk about today, and I came up with something, and then Dr. Purdom came up with something, and goes, uh, this is her news item. No, no, actually, it, uh, okay. It's your news item. No, Avery sent this to me, who's sometimes on the newscast here. Proposal for Belgian nude beach reject it for fears nudists will scare treasured bird it would scare me <laughs> so basically i mean the whole gist of the article is that they don't want to allow they're afraid what goes on and i don't know what goes on on a nudist speech nor do i want to know but they're concerned that what goes on there will scare the birds away and so because this is a, a rare bird their favorite bird they're not going to allow the nudist speech it was, it, was, yeah. it was George's item. It was her news item. No, Avery sent it to me. It must have been a I slow day. I do feel sorry for the bird. It, <laughs> it must have been a slow day on Fox News. <laughs> it must have been. It had to be. Oh, All right. you got to laugh at that so, one for sure. Explore Days. Thought we'd uh, mention this. We actually have a number of different workshops here at the Creation Museum throughout the year. We do. And the Explore Days are real exciting days. And this week in the workshops, see if you brought your family here to Answers in Genesis, come to the Creation Museum in the Ark Encounter. We do workshops at various times. You can check on the website, creationmuseum.org right. for that. And this is a special camp, actually, that we're doing this week. It's the, a five-day science camp. Five day camp. Five day one, yeah. But there's one-day workshops at various times throughout the year. we have one-day workshops twice a month throughout the school year. And then there's other workshops here, too. And there, oh, there's plenty. And, uh, yeah. So <laughs> this week, they were cutting up a sheep's heart. And so Dr. Tommy Mitchell, who actually is an internist, mm -hmm. yeah. and so he's a doctor, but he's full-time with Ants and Genesis, and he was there teaching them how to cut up uh, sheep's hearts. And you can see they're all enjoying themselves wow. here as uh, they're doing that. And so I did a Facebook Live with that. But hey, they do all sorts of fun things in Explore yeah. Days. That That's pretty neat, yeah. And we also have, for anybody that lives in the local area, we're also offering high school biology labs for homeschool students. So we have two spots left um, for this fall. So if you're interested, check out the website. And then great news, uh, we now have our videos available on PureFlix, pureflix.com. And for those people who subscribe to PureFlix, uh, they can actually get our videos. In fact, eventually, all of our videos, past, present, and future, and then into the future, even our live programming, but they're starting to put them up right now. Excellent. But think about it, there'll be 500 videos wow. that we have right now that'll be wow. going up on PureFlix. And if people subscribe wow. to PureFlix, then for less than the cost of buying one DVD a month, they get all of our content. And of course, PureFlix is sort of like a Christianized, family-friendly version of Netflix. So yeah. it's to really help families uh, be able to be, be discerning in regard to programs that they watch. Yeah, it's a lot better, particularly watching with your kids and things, you know, I know with... A lot of family-friendly yeah. content. Yeah. yeah. But the great news is it's another platform for us to get all of our video content out to the public. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a great idea for people. So let me get this straight. If, if, if they hop on, they can actually watch an old video of you maybe with like dark hair and stuff. Yes. 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 They. They. Well, yeah, I need to explain. Hair, no, right? I need to explain. I dyed my hair gray so people would know I'm getting older. Otherwise, gotcha. they wouldn't. Ha otherwise, they just wouldn't figure yeah. it out. You know. Anyways. So. Keep thinking that. Um, and if people do subscribe to PureFlix, they give you one month free trial anyway. Oh, nice. That's a great way to get mm -hmm. our answers and just material. That way they can test it out and try it out and see what they think. Hey, we have yeah. a number of real interesting news items today. We yeah. are. So the, the first one yeah. that I want to start with, so you had your nude beach one. This is my item, <laughs> okay? And my item, in Australia, 
Uh, they have two main parties, like they do in America. America, the Republicans and the Democrats. In Australia, here's the interesting thing. They have the Australian Labor Party and they have the Liberal Party. Well, the Liberal Party has been, in the past, the more conservative party. They're not Liberals and it, it's all weird. Yeah. But anyway... It's just there so, to confuse everybody. Yeah, so the Australian uh, Labor Party, which is more akin to, if you want to say what they're akin to in America, be more like the Democrats okay. in America. Uh, but in their draft constitution that they're going to vote on this December, on page 187 and paragraph 122 is very concerning for Christians because if you read it they say homophobic, biophobic, transphobic and intersexphobic harassment. Now keep in mind that I have been called homophobic simply because I say marriage is a man and a right. woman. Right. Right? That's what the Bible and teaches. So yeah. they say harassment by written or spoken word. Written word? How about the Bible? Bible, yeah. Right? causes actual harm, not simple mere offence, to people who have suffered discrimination and prejudice and causes particular harm to young, same-sex, attracted or gender questioning and intersex people and considers such harmful harassment is an unacceptable abuse of the responsibilities that come with freedom of speech and must be subject to effective sanctions. Labor will consider whether the current anti-discrimination law provides wow. such effective san sanctions. Can you imagine if they adopted that how that can be used against the Bible, against oh, yeah. Christians. Against pastors? Mm -hmm. I mean... <laughs> yeah, I mean, there goes freedom of speech. Right. You know, because they're what, what they're saying is you can't have freedom of speech, number yeah. one. Absolutely. So yeah. they're, they're going to impose a, a law against... Our whole Western world is moving in this direction. Yeah. Christians need to be standing up and yeah. contending for the faith. Uh, yeah. We need to be doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway... The will disappear otherwise. So. Hopefully we're trying to educate people, equip people to be able to defend the Christian faith uh, in today's world. Incidentally, somebody said here that Ken and Bodhi are wearing coats. Yes, we are. That's right. And That's Georgia right. should wear a science lab coat. <laughs> you know, yeah. that would be good. Yeah, put a white lab coat you on. Know, you know, you used to Why don't you do that next time? Uh, drank out I of yeah. one, I mean, I'm like, you should wear it. Because then you would look like a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but sorry, most scientists actually don't wear lab coats most of the time. But. Yeah, but Somebody you, says on here, looking very sporty in your jackets, gents. Oh yeah, there we, there you know. go. Are we you happy see. Now? We, knew, we knew we would uplift the whole standard today uh, by just wearing coats. Okay, can we get on to the actual? Did news? you know we plotted against you behind the scenes to do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I okay. would imagine that. Okay, a drone reveals massive Stonehenge-like circular monument in Ireland. So I'm going to let Bodhi talk about this because he's okay. a real archaeologist. I love this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yes, you, know. you love this stuff. Now uh, this particular area in Ireland, they they actually have got some of these other stone circles. So when they found this one, this was kind of a surprise. They weren't really expecting to see this one. It's pretty good size. I mean, mm -hmm. you can tell, you know, this is looking down at a field and a drone took a picture and they're like, oh, look at that. There's, a, <laughs> there's another one of these stone circles. Now see, a lot of people are familiar with Stonehenge. They may have heard of Stonehenge and they think, oh yeah, there's this fascinating stone circle. That's what Stonehenge is. But they don't realize that there's a lot of these things. You know, they're all across, uh, you know, places there in Northern Europe. You know, uh, the British Isles, Ireland, places like that, they're well known for them. But we even have a few over here in the United States, uh, one just north here in Cincinnati. And So the fact um, that there are these stone circles and similarities mm -hmm. basically all over the world, yeah, we th find them in a number they must have a common origin. You know, I suggest these things go all the way back to the Tower of Babel as people went to different parts of the world. We find some of these in South Africa. We find some in China and India. Uh, it, it is neat. Now, some of them are, are varied. They're a little bit different. But, uh, like, like Stonehenge, do yeah. they really know why they built Stonehenge you know, people, and, and these stone circles? People often wonder, but you know, one of the fascinating things about it is the way it's built. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, at uh, particular times of the year, the sun only goes through you know, at that one, one time. Um, you know, when you, uh, you know, get to certain points, you know, just by the way the sun moves you know, and their seasons change, there's this particular point where the sun just shoots right down this alley. It's, it's fascinating. People still go out and see it. So it's great for timekeeping, believe it or but, not. By the but way, there may have another purpose. In, in the article on this, when people read this, and we always put the links to all the articles in the actual comments, but it says, a drone flyby has revealed a prehistoric henge. And then later on, a mysterious prehistoric structure. Uh, so we were, read the word prehistoric, prehistoric peoples, if you, prehistoric yeah. people. Yeah. Keep in mind, how can, any, how can you have prehistoric anything when history began from when it was recorded, Genesis 1-1? Yeah. Right. And so Christians need to be thinking through that because right. we've all been secularized, evolutionized right. in, in the it, way it that we It just shows think. that ancient man is very intelligent. I mean, ancient yeah, man does. can do this for timekeeping and mm -hmm. other things. So. Yeah. Well, you know, they automatically shoot out the date, 5,000-year-old, uh, you know, for this. And 
look, it's 100 years old before Stonehenge. How, how do they really know that? Yeah, I mean, there, there's sure. so much guesswork no and so many assumptions behind radiometric dating. They really had to be careful of that kind of stuff. Well, we have a lot of people going online and putting comments here and appreciate that. Someone said here in regard to that previous article, so many are heterophobic. <laughs> Such a pity. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're going to have to introduce that term now. Yeah. Yeah. Heterophobic. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But someone asking if I'm going to be here in October. They're coming in October to the Creation Museum and the Ark. I may be. It just depends on okay. the day. Somebody what, says what, you all need ties. And oh, now let's not go too far with <laughs> ties. No. Yeah. Look, ties are not in the Bible. That's why I don't that, wear ties. That's right. Yeah. If the Bible said you have to wear a tie, that'd be different, but it the doesn't. Jackets are. That's right. Uh, yeah, that's different. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah that's, all right. Okay, so, hey, okay. by the way, just before you go on, do you know we have someone really special in our audience today? I'll embarrass her. You won't be able to see her on camera, but mm -hmm. her name is Maria, and she's sitting down the front, and she's 15 years old from New York. Her first language is Spanish, actually, and you can wave, Maria. <laughs> so wave. Here and what Maria does, yeah. she is involved in a Christian club in a public school after the school day and involved in teaching kids the Bible. Yeah, and uh, so we appreciate you doing that, Maria. All right, okay. a rare cosmic collision might let scientists calculate the precise age of the universe. So basically, our universe is expanding. Okay? What, wait a minute, I thought they already had the precise age, well, 4.5. No. That's what you no. think. Oh, they, they no. had all sorts 15, of precise dates. 15 dates. billion years, right? 15 well, billion. Yeah, but they talk 15, about the, the, the thing known as the Hubble constant. And they said there's two ways of measuring the expansion rate. Um, but, it's, but the problem is, is the two ways give... While they're precise, they give different numbers. So they're not as precise. I'm not as sure they how really precise they can be. If they give be. Yeah, I, that's what I was. I, yeah. That's what I couldn't understand here. They're yeah. precise, but their answers don't match. That's well, what it says. They're not accurate. We know that. Yeah, they're <laughs> precise, but their answers don't match. So if only they can have this third method, that's and the, the third key. method is something about something colliding with something or other a black hole with a a binary black only no a binary black hole no a black hole with a neutron star that's what it is a black they hole, have to collide they have to collide and, and then we, and then we can calculate the precise age of the universe well we right. can, they, they hope to well we can get the hubble constant see you think the hubble constant is constant <laughs> but they don't saying, know for sure exactly what it is. But they're saying the Hubble constant they, is they've not... They've assumed it's been constant, they don't know. and they've assumed they've known what it was, but, you know, based on some of these factors, they're not entirely sure. Yeah. So, you know, it, it just goes to show that, hey, even in the it's fields assumption. of astronomy and things like that, there's still some stuff that people question. Mm -hmm. Now, even if they had the Hubble constant, the problem is they're, they're, they're thinking in terms of uniformitarianism. Right where they're assuming the rates and things have not changed all the way back in the past, so they're basically looking at this, trying to extrapolate back into the past to get an age of the universe. Hey, I've got an idea. It's easier than that. Mm -hmm. Tell me. We can take a book called the Bible, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you start in Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and it tells us what happened on each of the six days. On day six, he made the first man, Adam. Yep. And when Adam was 130 years old, he had a son called Seth. Mm -hmm. And then you can read on about when Seth had a, a, a son mm -hmm. and you can add up all the dates and you can get uh, eventually uh, to uh, the flood mm -hmm. and then from the flood to Abraham and then Abraham to Christ and then through to today and it comes to about 6,000 years. Yeah. Yeah. Now think about this. We have a book from God who knows all things, created all things, has always been there and cannot lie. Why would we possibly throw that out the window yeah. and trust man-made ideas about the past where we weren't there, we didn't see it, we make mistakes all the time, and just make assumptions well, about Well, and the they're past. having to I mean, wait for this event to occur. It's not like it's occurred. They're just hoping yeah. it will occur Maybe at some point. They'll catch it, and they'll be able to measure it. Yeah, that's really good. And then in the future, okay. they'll try to come up with a better method to uh, arrive at it. And, yeah. yeah. Hey, um, somebody said, I hope there are no ties in heaven. Hey, isn't there a hymn, something like, Blessed be the tie that binds? No, hang on. Blessed be the ties that binds. Oh, yeah. okay. Mark like that. Uh, yeah. Good I, fun there, I was thinking so. about it. Somebody said here, right. it doesn't say women have to wear high heels, so I don't. I've never understood why women wear high heels. Okay, we're not going there. All okay. Right. We all are right. now living. So, we're all going to have white lab coats in heaven, right? Aren't we supposed <laughs> to be dressed hey, in white? There are a couple of people asking about this Friday's blood moon. Hasn't Dr. Faulkner written on that before? He on, has. on our website. So he if they go to the answersingenesis.org website, type in blood moon, you'll You'll find Lots out the all the information yeah. in there about that. Okay, we are now living in a new geologic age, experts say. So we are living, and I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this right, but the Megalayan, which began 4,250 years ago. They say, when a supposed planet-wide drought 
struck Earth. So this is just one of, of three um, newly named ages, which go back to about 11,700 years ago. And, and they're doing all the measurements <clears throat> based on uniformitarian assumptions, like we just talked about. That, so in other is. words, well, this is how it happens today. So if we take the rate mm -hmm. at which it happens today, extrapolate it to the past, that's how much time has passed. How, so yeah. all sorts of assumptions. Are, actually, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I really do believe we're living in a new geologic age. It's called the post-flood age. Yep. Yeah, and more specifically, the post-ice age. The post-ice age, yeah. within the post-flood age. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So they there were using the age they were using well, isotope yeah. ratios in stal yeah. stalagmites and so on. But yeah, they're looking at stalagmites mainly mm -hmm. um, for this, and looking at, so to speak, the sort of the growth pattern that's there, kind of like tree rings in a way. Yeah, and of course, there's the uniformitarian assumptions behind that as well. Right. And uh, you know, we can actually form stalactites and stalagmites very quickly. Stalactites mm -hmm. are the ones on top; they hold on tight. Stalagmites are at the bottom. If if they grow together into a column, scientists call that a column. We're not an entirely bright group, uh, but uh, but you know what? I mean, through photo monitoring, we've seen stalactites grow inches. But, but they're saying the those days. layers, yeah. so they're, they're assuming one layer it every a year or whatever. Right. Time. But but those layers, I mean, after the flood, you would have yeah. all sorts of climate change. In fact, you would have catastrophic climate change right. after the flood yeah. as things and are building up, wouldn't you? Probably more yeah. rainfall and things like and that. And that's what Dr. Uh, Snelling pointed out, our geologist yeah. here. He said, you know, there's going to be wetter periods followed by dry periods. But the thing is, after the flood, but those are going to occur in very quick succession. So that's what you're really seeing right. in the stalagmite. You're not seeing millions of years or thousands right. of years or well, more than thousands right. of years that they say. But you're saying you're seeing a much more compressed time that occurred probably right. shortly after the flood. And that goes back to flood. an active and an inactive cave. Right. If there's like a lot of water flowing through with mineral things, are growing they're getting bigger um, if it's a dry cave where it's dried up well then it's going to slow down so that's the key is the wet dry cycles hey right. did you know we just had a special guest join us here at answers news today who was it there he is oh we right. have a stink bug yeah oh i saw it crawling is, across does that yeah. represent oh, avery I don't deal or with brian that. maybe I... so oh they're it's on my computer don't now don't kill it yeah we have those things oh there. man look Okay. I, I still can't believe this, the dumb luck. You know, in the secular world, they have millions of years for all these different uh, rock layers. <laughs> and the dumb luck is that we just happen to be right here to, at one. Yeah. Just, I mean, what are the I, other? That bug is now a catapult. That stinks. It's a catapult bug. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, in, okay. Oh, you forgot to tell me to turn that on to the next one. That's your oh. fault. Yeah, it's my fault because you're too old and forgot. All right, well, let's move on. All right. Did you hear that? She insulted me. She said I was too old and forgot. Did you hear that? And I always say such positive things well, about it. Well, good thing you're totally. dying your hair. So I got to throw a few yeah. in. So, all right, impact of temperature on mitochondrial DNA evolution. So, this is talking about the fruit fly, and um, so for years and years. Hang on, hang on a second. What? I'm going to show you. I'm going to be very scientific. Oh, no. Drosophila melanogaster. Correct. Yes. Correct. We studied it at university. Yes. Mostly we had those little fruit flies. Mm -hmm. And we bred fruit flies. Mm -hmm. Did you blast them with and we, rays and stuff? We did everything we could to those little fruit flies. We irradiated them. We put poisons on them. We did all sorts of stuff. And you know, stink bug just and you know, after everything we did, you know what we still had? Fruit, fruit, fruit flies. flies. Yeah. Messed well, up fruit yeah, flies, probably. Because the professor was telling us this is a great example of evolution in fruit yeah. flies. Variation. It was, it was yeah. wonderful. And then, fruit flies produce fruit flies. Yeah. I tell you, I was Mutant convinced of evolution flies. after yeah. that. And what they're showing here is that, so everyone always thought, so mitochondrial DNA is DNA that's inside the mitochondria of your cells. It's not in the nucleus like we normally think about DNA. Mm -hmm. And so for years, we didn't think that anything really affected um, or selected for or against variations in mitochondrial DNA. Um, we just thought it was passed down, so to speak. And that's actually passed down from, on the mother's side, From right? the mother's side, yeah. right. So they find out, though, in fruit flies, certain variations in the mitochondrial DNA are selected for at higher temperatures, and certain variations are selected more so for climates. at lower temperatures. Yeah. So they must have some advantage to the organisms in that particular environment, which is way cool, but has, has absolutely nothing to do with evolution because the right. temperature, the way this is worded in That's here, it says, isn't it? it says the temperature causes the variations. No, the temperature selects for or against right. the variations. There are variations are already there. So the information was already there. It's just right. being selected. Right. For. Yeah, now, it's, it's just like an article I saw recently about quolls, uh, animals in Australia, masupas in uh -huh. Australia, uh, where they said that um, they were eating cane toads and, and actually 
killing themselves from the poisons and the cane toads and they're, so they're trying to breed these quolls with other ones to get better gi genetic diversity uh -huh. in the quolls and they said they're speeding up evolution. <laughs> Speeding up variation. What, what do they change into? It's, they're just well, do it, it's just a genetic yeah. diversity that's already there. It's the same with these fruit hey, flies, right? So here's what I'm curious about. How, how would this relate to humans? Yeah, and that's my thing. I mean, yes, temperatures greatly affect these tiny little fruit flies. For us, not so much. I mean, we've got insulation, so to speak. We can put on uh, jackets. We can put on jackets. We can go in from about. the cold. Yeah. So I don't know. It, it is interesting to see that something can affect that, can select mm -hmm. for or against it. I just don't know how much the impact that's going to have on understanding that in humans, yeah. but we might want to look for some things that might impact it. Or might yeah, I'd be curious forward. to see. For oh, by the way, one of our fans here obviously listens very carefully to everything you say, uh, Dr. Purdom, and all the scientific facts you give, because okay. she made a comment here. We've had stink bugs on at least three Answers News episodes now. <laughs> I'm not, really? Wow, you're watching closer than I am. Then. <laughs> so there are. That person's well, obviously watching closer. Okay. Um, hey, somebody here said, warning, there's a scammer going on with the name of Kenneth Ham. Contacted me on Messenger. Actually, you know what happens now and then? It's typical today. People go on there and put fake Facebook right. sites, and then they contact people and use my name and photograph and so on. And of course, they get taken down pretty quickly. But we never contact people, and we never send things through Messenger. So mm -hmm. just so people know that. So let me get this straight. Non-Christians are acting in a non Christian way to pretend like they're you. That's yeah, not a surprise. Yeah. yeah. For a while a there was actually a Facebook page when I would search for your name for through your Facebook page, there was another one that said Ken Ham Scumbag. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they're the oh, tame ones. You, you should know, see the really other ones. Creative with nice. their titles. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, All they right. are. And the, the person doing that is probably, probably sitting in their mother's basement right now watching us. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, Good one. This magnetic wire. And they could wire, even be in Canada watching yeah. us. <laughs> this magnetic wire could one day pull cancer cells from your blood. So this is a great, sometimes we like to do these sort of yeah. observational science um, engineering ones, which Bodhi really likes. I like this stuff too, yeah. But basically they're taking these nanoparticles and they're magnetizing um, cancer cells preferentially. Then they put a wire, they're inserting a wire into the vein. They did this with pigs. And the wire, because the cancer cells are magnetized, they get attracted to the wire. And so when they pull the wire out, they've got the cancer cells. And so, and it's great technology because sometimes mm -hmm. cancer cells are very rare in the blood. And so this is a way to basically have a higher ability to detect them. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm blown away by this. You know, yeah, I love the materials research and the processing of materials uh, with my background. You know, I, I love things. I knew people that were working on things similar to this over 20, 25 years ago. And uh, it, it's just neat seeing some of this stuff come to fruition. You mm -hmm. know, the key is getting the right nanoparticle uh, to right. attach to the That's cancer amazing. cells, makes it magnetic to be able to do that. I think it said, you know, they would draw blood, what, about 60 times was it in here? Um, to be equivalent to the one time that they would do that. No, about 80 tubes of blood yeah. to match it. Uh, what they could do in about 20 minutes. You never know what they're going to do for the future. Hey, you know, for the young people in the audience here and those watching, this is a great example of observational science. Yep. And this is the point we make over and over again. When they were talking about, remember the earlier article, we were talking about the age of the universe, mm -hmm. and they're talking about, well, the Hubble constant, we might have to get a, to try and get a, a better value for it, and, and you know, we, we, we need something else to try to calculate the age of the universe. See, that's historical science. They're talking about the past, and we got all sorts of assumptions, and we weren't there. And evolution, when you're talking about molecules to man, that's historical science. That's not observational science. Observational science is doing things just like this. Yeah. And when I was on this very stage debating Bill Nye, that's the point I made to Bill Nye. Yeah, because you guys would it, agree on those we, we would agree on the observational science. It's on the historical science. We disagree, but here's what they do in the public schools. They use the word science for both historical and observational science, which is how they brainwash kids. Because they say, oh, look, this is science. You know, and this, what we're seeing here, the magnetic wire here, this is, this is science, observational science. Say, so that's science. And then they say, Oh, um, you know, the evolution of fruit flies, that's science. Yeah. Well, no, no. They're not evolving. They're not evolving. That's an equivocation in, fallacy on, yeah, the, on right. the word yeah. science. Really. So it's and important, really important for people to understand that. the curse. I mean, that's what we're trying to do is yeah, go, up against against the, it, yeah. go up against the fall and the effect of the fall, mm -hmm. and that's a good thing. Hey, somebody else here said... Uh, Someone has an account called Ken Ham. Someone sent a friend request, Ken Ham. This, this happens yeah. quite often. We appreciate it when people let us know because we yeah. get uh, our guys people. to go into Facebook. Yeah. And, and I think uh, yours has a little verified check. It by does. It. And we never send out friend yeah. requests. And believe me, the person who sent out a friend request is not a friend. Believe me. 
Uh, <laughs> well, you, you I, have what? Three hundred thousand followers. Three hundred thousand on my Facebook. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that's right. Usually, that should help you. If do somebody it. has twenty-two. Well, yeah. Three hundred thousand followers, no not three hundred thousand friends. I can yeah. tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's right. All right. School broke law by promoting student-led mission trips. So this is a public school district in Colorado that was promoting a mission trip by the fellowships that was sponsored by the Fellowship of Christian Athletes to go to an orphanage in Guatemala. And they wanted the school kids to bring in things like toothpaste and soap and shampoo for them to take down to Guatemala. But then the American Humanist Association filed suit against them. Yeah, I mean, as, uh, as this article says by Todd Starnes, mm -hmm. he says, only a group of humanists would be offended by Christian teenagers helping impoverished orphan children in a foreign country. Yeah. And I mean, this is how bad it is. You know, you've, you've got a group, right. so they're Christian. It's a Christian group. They're doing a hum humanitarian thing. Right, they're doing a humanitarian thing. So they're collecting items to take to impoverished people. Mm -hmm. And they say, oh, no, because that... That goes against uh, the Establishment Clause. Separation uh, in, of church th and that's and state. what they actually said. This goes against the Establishment Clause. Well, let's read the first part of the Establishment Clause. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Mm -hmm. Or prohibiting the free exercise yeah. of. And the Establishment of Religion, by the way, you notice there's no phrase separation of church and state. There's no such thing. It's not in there. And, and what, I don't think they established a religion in that school when they did that. No. No, and they weren't saying you have to be Christian, and they weren't. No, that you have to participate. They weren't saying you have to participate. If, if you it's want to bring shampoo, you can. You know what? You know what it's similar to. When we applied in the state of Kentucky for the tourism tax incentive, a rebate on sales tax you generate in a tourist facility, uh, because Kentucky has that available to people. Yeah. If you build a tourist facility uh, and you bring it to Kentucky, then the, the sales tax you generate, so it's actually new money generated anyway, uh, you get a rebate on that to go towards your capital costs as an incentive for you to build it in Kentucky. Well, we actually were approved for that, and then uh, the then governor, not the now governor, the then governor uh, denied us that and said, no, because you're Christian, you can't do that. We went to federal court over that on the basis of the First Amendment yeah. and said, wait a minute, just because we're Christian, they can't say we can't build a tourist facility and get the same incentive, and the judge ruled conclusively in our favor. Yeah, so essentially they were saying, we'll give this tax incentive to anybody but Christians. Right. Can you, you imagine discrimination? if an atheist group said, oh, we want to go down to Haiti or wherever it is, uh, we want to go down there and uh, we want to... Uh, give some shampoo. Give some shampoo <laughs> and we're collecting that. Uh, can, can we do that? Well, uh, they're not going to say anything. They'll say, oh, yeah, it's a great idea. But a Christian group says, we're going to Oh, no, no, it's well, Christian. Well, that's because atheism, too. They say, well, that's not religious. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's a set of beliefs. So is humanism, atheism yeah. is religion just like Christianity is that's religion. Right. They don't believe in the existence of God, which is a belief system. And they have certain, you know, ideas and things. Yeah, and they, so. can, get, but here, they can get tax exempt status. But here's another interesting thing. If we really want to get down the bottom line, like it says here, the court ruled that the school district's actions were an excessive government entanglement with religion. Well... <laughs> The judge was very liberal, right. and uh, these days, as you know, it, it's got nothing to do with the law. It's everything to do with your worldview. But said this, religious minorities in public schools should never be faced with school-sponsored activity that promotes the majority religion. Actually, the majority religion in the public schools is atheism, <laughs> yeah. because yeah. our tax tax dollars mm -hmm. are funding a state religion because now they're imposing generations of kids, they're imposing on them the belief that you can explain everything without God. Mm -hmm. Naturalism is atheism. Yeah, so atheism you, is the state it, religion. Yeah, if you see Big Bang in the textbooks or you see evolution or millions of years, those are aspects of that particular religion. Yep. Do, do we see humanist outcry saying, hold on a second, we got religion in our textbooks, we need to do something about this. They're more than happy to let those yeah. slide. Hey, by the so way, did you know our token millennial that we have on here now and then, Avery, when Bodie's away or Georgia or myself, Avery fills in for us. She, and we call her our token millennial. <laughs> um, she's actually on watching us. Oh, Excellent. Okay. My daughter's yeah. watching myself. Mm -hmm. so. So, and That's your good. daughter is watching. Okay. And um, my wife is not watching. <laughs> actually, I don't blame if her. I can take a okay. moment here. Uh, Ken Ham has a DVD, and you could probably binge watch this one on uh, Pure Flix. It's called The Need for Creation Ministry, Understanding the Times. And the reason I wanted to talk about this particular DVD, I mean, we, we keep seeing all this different news, anything from transgender and the gender debate to uh, climate issues to uniformitarianism. 
Christians sometimes say, how did we get ourselves into this situation and what do we do? I'll tell you what, this is a powerful DVD to really get back and show you, hey, we got to get back to Genesis. Is, is that one I did? That's one you did. Look at that. I don't remember doing that yeah. one. He's got a little darker hair, so it's yeah, probably Yeah, you dyed it a little different. Oh, okay. okay. Right. Um, that must be why I didn't remember doing <laughs> it. All right. You're getting bad Well, you're getting older. Today. Maybe you like, can't remember it, it for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cease and desist. Town orders family to stop hosting Bible studies on farms. So this is in Pennsylvania. Um, in the Sewickley Heights borough, they were told to stop holding Bible studies on their private property, claiming that it was an egregious violation of the U.S. Constitution. Now, when I read that, I thought, you know what's egregious? <laughs> that you're denying uh, their freedom of speech and freedom of religion. That's yeah. egregious. I mean, I, I was just flabbergasted. Prohibiting by that. the free exercise. Prohibiting the free exercise. A actually, you know, what the First Amendment's all about was in, in England, there was a state church. Right. Yes, the and, church. Right. Uh, so, church as somebody said on here, they ignore the clause that, that's really saying yeah. Congress cannot create a church of America. Right. And that, that's correct. That's what it's all about. It says nothing about school children going on a mission right. trip. Of course. Right. right. Yeah. Or even here, you know, having uh, worship at a house. I mean, all of God's creation is a great place to worship God. Hey, you remember, you, it's his. All of it. Look what happens in China. If you, if you have it uh, in China, mm -hmm. if you have a Bible study that's well known in your house or you have a home church or something, you're liable to get arrested and put in jail. You think that could never happen in America or our Western world? Oh, yes, it there could. It and we're there moving in that direction. Well, it's, it's a warning they're, to us. They're, they're, you know, if they, they were threatened with fines of $500 a day plus court costs for having Bible studies at their home, having meetings where religious songs are sung, conducting any religious retreats for church leaders or seminary students or conducting religious fundraisers. Hmm. I, I mean, it just blows you away that they're saying this is wrong and they can't do this. You know what's interesting? I keep hearing people say, well, you know, there's a separation of church and state. Well, why is it that the state keeps getting involved in the church then? Yeah, exactly. Do we ever look at it from that perspective? And hey, buddy, that, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> you know, when you, when you I, wear a jacket like this, I know, it kind of helps step you up a little bit. It did something to you. That, well, wow. And, and it's not like they're stopping, are they stopping other book clubs, like book clubs Secular where they're places? discussing books? That's right. Um, I mean, if, if this is true, you've got to say it's true for everything. Yeah, you humanists can't just can't assemble, out. atheists yeah. can't assemble. What you know, about they need to have their own church building to Amway do Amway meetings in your home? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, that's the it's, thing. It's How, you got you to gotta say it's mm -hmm. for everything or you can't say it's yeah. for hey, Somebody said thing. here, Ken doesn't remember that DVD because he did it millions of years ago. Oh, there we go. Oh, good I, comment. I must I admit, like sometimes, sometimes it feels like that. Yeah. It really does. All we, right. Well, we're out of time. <laughs> we're out of time? We're out of time right. for today. So for the people that are here, the live audience, they can come out and right. meet us right. now, in the lobby? Now, we're going to miss on Monday. Monday, none of us are here. None of us Believe are going to But we're still having Answers News because... Avery is going and to lead Brian it. Avery and Brian Osborne. And Brian Osborne. Osborne. Our speakers will be now, here. Yeah. We're actually going to be at the International Conference on Creation. Right. And I'm, key, I'm giving a keynote you're you're on keynote the Sunday there. night. On no, I'm Sunday there. Evening. Oh, you're, yes, you're there Sunday night, but then not oh, Monday. Oh, then, then right. yeah. yeah, then Monday I have to go to New York or something. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, just, you know, so people understand a little bit more about that. That is a conference that's held once every about four or five years. Mm -hmm. And a lot of creationists come together. That's held in Pittsburgh. If people yeah. want to find out more information, they can. But... Uh, um, aren't you also doing some speaking this week uh, throughout uh, the Creation Museum? Aren't you? Oh, yeah, at the Creation uh, Museum. Actually, last time we were on Answers News, I said it was the next week. But Yeah, I know. And then I, I got all confused and said, <laughs> yeah. no, it's next week. It's, it's this okay. week. Yeah. Well, it's not this week, but it's this coming week. Yes. Right? It's next week. I starting Tuesday. on Monday. Next Monday. No, at I'm Tuesday, speaking right? 12 o'clock Monday, oh, Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yes. Yeah. At, the creation, at the Creation Museum. Ken Ham Week at the Creation Museum. So. <laughs> That's okay. Good. So you're All right. Well, All right. we'll God bless. see you next week sometime. Bye.